One, say hello! Okay, this is pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, we have five regions that are Skyping in. This here, just so you know, even though you're looking at the screen, that's actually the camera uh, that is picking you up. So I'm wondering, Vijay? Great, or maybe, maybe somebody else might be on this camera just so we can pan it a little bit so everybody can see. Joanne, smile. We're trying to get as many of the images up. So I'm gonna speak really, really quickly about what's going on. Just, just a little, just a little pan. So regions, this is everybody in the room in Boston. And we're gonna allow everybody, of course, to introduce themselves because that is the, the function of this exercise. One second. Because an uh, exercise is a strange word, but it is an experiment because this is the first time I know I have ever done anything like this. This is the first time it's ever been done in the commons. Give it up for the first time! Hello. And we've been, um, the tech has been really, really interesting. So just so you know, some of the things that are happening Thank you. Is, that, um, is that we might lose uh, audio, we might lose video, uh, we might have all of it. We've had little problems with reverb. It's, a little, it's, a, it's an imperfect thing that we're trying here, as is life and art. Uh, but we're gonna do our best. So please bear with us when we have uh, technical things. We would hope for you to stick around. The main focus of this, of this conversation, is to hear from these centers in the west, in the south, southeast, the east, and the north, about how they are bringing their their communities together in order to empower their efforts as Latino theater makers. So we're gonna get a chance to hear from all of them. We would request from you, yeah, we'll, we'll in, yeah, we're gonna put everybody up. Um, I need to have a copy or maybe you can remind me. I was supposed to read the six stances and it, it's in my papers, but I was teching so I didn't get it to pull out in the front. Do you have those? Deep listening. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. So, and this is our request to you all because it's gonna be kind of strange to be in this room. And um, this is something, I think, I don't know if you folks have heard, forget, pardon my back, um, but this is something we've been talking about in the, the nature of how we're, how we're participating. And there are six stances, deep listening, which means not just hearing, but really taking in the, what we hear <laughs> through all our senses. Suspension of certainty, and this is gonna be very clear, <laughs> we don't know it all. Uh -huh. And uh, we don't even know what we think we might know. Seeking whole systems and diverse perspectives, that's exactly what's happening here, is we've got perspectives coming from different parts of the country as well as ourselves in this room. Respect for others. So we would ask in this room if we could keep the talking down because it's gonna be a little hard to hear. Welcoming all that is arising, so in particular maybe any tech glitches and stuff. And then finally, trust in the transcendent. The transcendent technology. I feel like I'm echoing, echoing, echoing. How transcendent is that, 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 that? Okay, we have five communities. I'm gonna stop talking now. I'm gonna move this over. I didn't stop talking. And we're going to um, allow everybody to introduce themselves. So let's start with Miami. Can we get Miami up on the screen first, please, Vijay? Saludos a Miami. <laughs> right on. Okay, quick question now. Who's in the room? And then you'll take it and turn it and turn it and turn it. Thank you. Okay, can you all hear me? 
Yeah. Great, wonderful. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Thank you so much for inviting us. It's a real honor to be a part of this. And uh, I'm Joe Añaro. I'm the director of Prometeo Theater, which is the only Spanish language conservatory in the United States uh, that was formed 40 years ago. And with me, I have Jorge Hernandez. Hey, hello. Hello, how are you? Um, my name is Jorge. I am an actor in the community. I I don't I don't know if you want to I start talking about a little bit about or only say my name. See, Jorge Hernandez. I'm an actor. I'm living in Miami for 17 years, working in different projects and uh, TV and everything that comes along. And uh, here with us we have students from Prometeo Theater that also uh, have come to uh, watch this and be a part of this history. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Briefly, Joanne, where are you? And I will send it to New York. We are in Miami. But where? At the... <laughs> what location? So we sent out an email and asked if we wanted to see it. As you see, we got a pretty good response from everybody. Yes. Can you guys hear me? OK. Yes. OK, great. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the room's pretty, pretty diverse, a pretty good New York, group of people here in uh, New York. I think around like 15 or 16 people, uh, representing a lot of different places, a lot of different boroughs, um, a lot of different stages of career. And I also wanted to point out that not just New York is represented in this room, we also have uh, DC over here, Woo! and we also have uh, Hartford, Connecticut over here as well. You get so you get, <laughs> I, this really uh, speaks to the necessity of this conversation that so many people wanted to come and participate. And so I think I'm handing it over now to LA, right? So Chicago. Over to you, Armando. We'll get back to you. Um, I'm here at the LATC, the Los Angeles Theater Center, operated by the Latino Theater. Uh, I worked here for about four years, uh, and now I'm an independent arts administrator, uh, currently working on the world premiere of Said by Karen Anzotegi, premiering here next month. Uh, I'm here with a few people, Fanny Garcia, Woo! Tom Sandoval, Hello. Christina Helm, uh, Jay Ed. Hi, everybody. Yay! Michael Gavino and Doug Jacobs. Doug Jacobs. Uh, oh, <laughs> designers uh, here in the room with us. Jeff Rivas in the back. And Jeff Rivas in the back. Operating our demo. Thank you, Jeff. I think I'm, I'm handing it over now. I don't remember to whom. Chicago. Let's, ca let's go back to Chicago. Yes, thank you. We're here. Dallas, we're here. We are, we are uh, Tanto, uh, which is the Teatro Alantia of North Texas Theaters. And I'm Lorenzo Garcia, I'm a member at Tanto. And we have several other folks here tonight that I'd like to introduce. Maybe they'll introduce themselves very quickly. And it's Frida Lozano from Caramia, Theater Company, Tanto. Alberto Gonzalez, Caramia, Theater Company. Uh, Carlos Ortega for uh, Teatro Flor Candela. Natalia Dubrov, 
Great. We are happy to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right on. So just a quick note. Um, sorry? Okay. Just a quick note. Yes. Yeah, so one of the beauties of this, uh, we're able to see most of, this, of the groups that we've had a little bit of trouble getting a visual image, a video image from Dallas. So they've got their logo up, which is great. So now we're going to go on to the second question. Uh, and we're going to go around the same way, Miami, New York, Chicago, L.A., Dallas. And the circle of, the, of this question is briefly, a couple of minutes, and this is a big question, but how do you describe your Latino-making community, your Latino theater-making, Latino-making community, Latino theater-making community? Wow. Miami, Joanne. Hi. Bueno, uh, first, uh, I have to say hello to Mario y Beatriz. Uh, uh, hello. <laughs> um, which is part of our Latino theater community, and uh, very excited that you're there. We've been watching you. Um, we have a very unique community in Miami, as I'm sure you've heard, because the majority of our theaters and theater makers uh, do so in Spanish. Primarily, we very rarely, I think, do uh, Hispanic plays in English, except possibly in the other universities. Um, we have a very unique situation with Prometeo um, because Prometeo, like I said, is a place that all these Hispanic actors from different countries in Latin America can come and continue to work and continue to grow and learn, and directors and writers also get to work with us. Um, I've asked Jorge to come because Jorge is also part of the professional uh, Latino theater community and has worked with other theater companies here. It's a very difficult way that, it's one of our challenges in terms of us getting together because it has been very difficult to even sustain doing theater in Spanish. It is a true, um, you know, it's a true struggle. And right now, Miami, I think, has grown so much because we have such an amazing uh, amount of theater in Spanish and a lot of theater makers that are doing theater in Spanish. So I don't know, Jorge, if you want to say a couple words. No. Uh... <laughs> no, what I wanted to say is that I moved to Miami in 1997 and at that time, my first work was with Mario Ernesto, that he was preparing a play for the International uh, Festival Theater. And it was my first, you know, my first uh, artistic activity in, in Miami. And at that time, you, can, you could find some actors that came from all Latin America, but the heads of all the projects usually were Cubans. And uh, this is the truth that at that time, I think that in the last six or seven years, um, all the different um, communities in Miami, like Venezuela, uh, Mexico, Colombia, they had started with projects by themselves. I think that the first thing that we have, that, that's now our goal is to get together. You know, no, no programs, no, no meetings to say what is the goal that you are going to pursue, but uh, to get together. And I think for me, for example, in this last two years, I have been involved in many different projects that uh, perhaps the head of the production is from Venezuela and or uh, Colombia, you know, now I'm doing some works as well in the art center and uh, it's in English. Last year, I took part in a project in Upstate New York in a Shakespeare the festival, and uh, I think that that's that's the the main uh, characteristic of of uh, the theater community in Miami. That now I think that we are getting together. Beautiful. Also, I just want to say, you know, Prometeo and the festival, Mario Neto's festival, we work together, we partner, we share space, 
with Beatriz, we uh, work together to form the, the educational component. We're very interested in making our theater community um, an intellectually stimulating theater community, a place where um, other artists want to come. And we've been very lucky, I think, that we've been able to, through the festival and then through our local communities, um, inspire uh, artists to write new plays, directors to direct uh, different things. And I think the most challenging thing, and I think one of the things that we're working with now, is getting the English-speaking audience to come and see our plays. And they come and they go, and we say, oh, we have super titles in English. So we will include you so that it's not a segregated community, but an inclusive community. I wanted to say Beautiful. something. Beautiful. Oh. No, because uh, last year, uh, last year, um, I was performing in a play. There is a project here in Miami that is just the first project, is that, that, the one that I work on, is to make a play from Argentina with the same cast, one day in Spanish and one day in English. Wow, with the same cast. wonderful. And uh, I think that is interesting, but uh, actually the, the English spoken community, they are not so attractive. To, yeah, they're not so you know, involved right. in this kind of uh, very few that are actors, directors that want to know something about the Latin movement in the city, but no great audience yet. Thank you. I actually appreciate that. Joanne, I'm going to pause for just a second for two reasons. One, uh, our third round of questions is going to be how you're addressing those together as a community. So I want to hold off on that. But the other point is we're getting this uh, circular feedback. And we think it might be because one of the five locations has their live streaming audio still on. And that may be causing the loop of repetition of echo. So if each of you in your five regions could please just take a look and see if you are also live streaming, please turn off that audio. And that should remove the, the, the echo. <laughs> Is it HowlRound? <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Oh, that's what a howl round is? <laughs> Could you please turn off the howl round? I guess, right? It, it's cause the joke here is that that's what howl round actually means, is that feedback loop. Wow, learn something, suspend certainty, right? Get out. Okay, thank you. So then we're gonna move forward. We need to keep moving because we only have about another 50 minutes to do all of it and we wanna get to Q&A. So, I, and, and I'm just gonna leap in, invite New York City uh, to tell us a little bit, and this is big, it's big, but please keep it down to like two to three minutes about uh, describe your Latino theater making community in New York City. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, I don't know, I think two to three minutes would be really difficult to describe <laughs> what all happens in the Latino theaters in New York. Um, I just think multi, and we kind of talked about it earlier, just like the word multi really is the thing for me. I don't know if anyone else has something to well, chime in. Just so many different types and so many different ideas. Multi-ethnic, multi-racial, multi-cultural, multi-lingual, interdisciplinary art scene. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, hi, I'm Rosalba, and... Um, <laughs> across generations, uh, uh, especially across generations. And, and when we say multicultural, also multiracial, we have a very, very large uh, practitioners in, in and teatreros in New York that are from mixed races that identify themselves <coughs> with both of their heritages, but they are contributing a lot to the landscape. 
New York is a very, very complex combination. We're working always at the intersection of that commercial temptation that is on Broadway and the rest of the state and even the rest of the region. There are some 12 to 15 venues, um, you know, theaters, and also whole hundreds of affiliated and unaffiliated individual practitioners. And I'm not talking only about playwrights and actors, but stage managers and designers and composers. <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> we can all live without the stage managers, so we want to include them. So I. We have the Latino Theater Alliance in New York City, I believe Louis in Boston, I, I think. Um, and uh, that alliance is of venues. And so there are, in no way, that does that mean that that's the only representation of New York, but that we depend actually on the whole community behind us. So it is, a, it is a complex landscape. I do want to take this opportunity and I'm very self-indulgent. And I am so amazed that the entire country is in this call as Paragones and the Puerto Rican Traveling Theater will announce our merger on Monday. I think you announced it today. <laughs> Yes. Okay, Chicago. You're on. Hi. Uh, I'm actually going to have Isaac, who's the literary intern at the Goodman, who's been helping us with the event, talk a little bit about what we've been talking about this morning. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, my name is Isaac Gomez, and I am the literary intern here at the Goodman Theater. Um, and so we've had some really exciting conversation today among the several different theater companies within the city talking about what Latino theater is, what are our issues, and in what ways we can move forward. And so in discussing the kinds of Latino theater that we are seeing in the city throughout history, there's such an array and transformation and evolution from the experimental and poetic kind of theater from the Latino Experimental Theater Group in the 70s and 80s to some of the more contemporary um, device pieces that you're seeing in our younger and newer uh, Latino theater companies within the city. And so um, in doing some popcorn dialogue with the people in the room, we've come up with some really great terms to describe what Latino theater here is in Chicago. And so some of these terms are, you're gonna love these. Uh, <laughs> refreshing, loud, sexy, crispy, too humble, homogenous, not enough, Messy, pan dulce, experimental, reflective, politicized, not allowed to fail, still European in nature. So as you can see, there's such, and that's just a, that's just a small fragment of a lot of discussion that happened this morning here um, at the Goodman with the artists in Chicago. And in saying that, we are aware that we are in such a good place, um, yet there's still so much work to do. And largely it stems from um, bridging the gap between older and Latino stories and communities um, and, and with energized and younger Latino artists in the city. We're seeing such a dramatic increase of young and excited actors and performers and writers. Um, and so with that's, that is how our Latino theater making has transformed over time and where we hope to see it in the future. And now I humbly turn it over to Los Angeles. <laughs> So um, I took some notes down. <laughs> I took some notes down. On sort of That's what we call a hell round. Latino theater in LA is quite huge. I wouldn't say it's, it's LA city. It's kind of regional. So in forming our alliance here locally, we have. Uh, contingency in, in Orange County. We have people that come up from San Diego. Um, at our uh, regional Encuentro in, in, over the summer, we had people come down from Teatro Vision, um, which was quite wonderful. So it, it's, it's very regional in its scope. Um, it's very diverse, interdisciplinary, and I think the LETC really exemplifies that. Um, they have uh, a show here, The Road Weeps by Marcus Gardley, which is an uh, intersection between Seminole and, and the black community. And then a Latino play playing right now, Wild in Wichita, is um, it's a couple that comes together. One's Mexican, one's Puerto Rican, and 
that one uh, I think came up through uh, Repertorio Español, through their uh, playwriting competition, and, and then it went to the BFA, and then it came here. So that's sort of an example of the theaters here working together. It transferred from the Bilingual Foundation of the Arts to the LATC for a second run. Um, it, we have, we counted during the Alliance meetings about nine um, spaces, Latino operated, including the LATC, the Frida Kahlo Theater, uh, Casa 101, uh, I'm gonna forget them all, <laughs> off the tracks and, and the list goes on. Uh, so um, something else is education is a big component. Um, the LATC here had a summer conservatory which worked with youth J. Ed, uh, which is who's with us, um, is the chairman of the MFA acting program at UCLA. Jose Luis Valenzuela, who's at the at the Commons, is the chairman of the directing program. And, and there's Edith Villarreal, is the head of playwriting. Edith Villarreal is the head of playwriting. So there's three Latinos in that institution at UCLA, and that. <laughs> Ranges um, from professional down to, like uh, Josefina mentioned, I think yesterday, sort of the entry level where people can come in and access theater over a casa, and so it, it really ranges in that level of like um, the kinds of, of, of theater. Uh, and then uh, it's very historical. Uh, some examples would be the Latino Lab at the Mark Taper Forum, uh, the Hispanic Playwrights Project over at South Coast Rep. And so we're, we're in a very uh, cool place here. And uh, the theater we're actually in, uh, many, many companies nationally have passed through here. And uh, the, the, this theater we're in, their theater two, is going to be renovated. Uh, it's going to be called the Lupe Ontiveros um, Theater. So, yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll hand it over. Thank you. Thank you. And Dallas, we'd love to hear from you. What's the theater community like there? Dallas? Oh, if you're muted, um, please unmute. We can't hear you yet. Okay, we're here. Perfect. I would like to emphasize first that, uh, again, we're an alliance. No, I'm not muted. We can hear you now. Can you do us a favor because, because we can't see you, if you could speak a little right. bit slower, it'll actually help us hear a little bit better. Okay, great. No, no. And if you are live streaming, can you please turn it off? of North Texas Theaters and North Texas Organization. We are not live streaming. And we are going to be one year old in December as an organization. And we meet once a month. With that in mind, it's important to so it's important to keep in mind that we meet as a group and what you see represented here is a group. So I will start the conversation. And then my colleagues will join in. We, we are an alliance of six to seven theater companies that are spread across North Texas, which includes Dallas and Fort Worth. We have companies that have been existent over 28 years and some just a few years. So again, it runs the gamut of history here. Some of the companies do all their work in Spanish, and some of the companies combine Spanish and English. And then, of course, we have a large contingency of independent artists that perform at different times with the various companies. And now perhaps we have other members of Banco that might want to sort of contextualize their sense of work in Dallas, Fort Worth. Okay, um, my name is Frida Lozano. I am an ensemble member of Caramia Peter Company. 
but um, I'm uh, I am Mexican and I have been living here for about eight years and during this years I have always also worked with other different companies like Teatro Dallas, uh, Flor Candela, and uh, I also do some individual work. And well, um, I, in my experience in, in living in this country and doing theater in this country, uh, it is a, a mission that I have found, something that I didn't found in my own country, that is this mission to take our, to our community uh, the possibility to, to, to reflect ourselves. Because in Mexico, uh, we represent all kind of theater that is beautiful and, and it is important as well. But here, people need, people is in need to, to, to look uh, plays and to look uh, read literature that, that talks about their own experiences. And, and we can offer that needs. And that's something that I want to share with you. That's, can, can we move? Thank you so much. Is it OK with you if we? Perdón. Perdón. <laughs> in the theater, in the art, because it's, it's been difficult in this country to, to, to maintain or being or working just in theater is kind of hard, but now we've been seeing if we are united, we can um, be uh, supported in different ways. So I'm really happy to see all this community united to at least through this meeting. I'm really happy with that. And for example, today we are we're going to do an open house in the new theater uh, for the house of the Teatro Flor Candela. It, it's our big opening today, and I'm really excited about it. And everybody is invited today. <laughs> uh, we are going to do a, also a Dia de los Muertos celebration. You know, it's a Mexican uh, tradition, but now it's, it's in everywhere all around the world. And, and so I just want to thank you, Lauren, and thanks for being part of this. Thank you. Beautiful. So we're um, going to move into the next and last question. Hello? Dis disculpe, ¿puedo interrumpir, por favor? ¿Me permiten? Sorry, can I interrupt? So the importance of this new people. Hello. Uh, the of the history. Like I, I feel so rude. Hello. <laughs> Por favor. <laughs> Dallas. Uh, am I muted? <laughs> okay. Sorry. Dallas, disculpe, por favor. <laughs> okay. okay. Hello, yeah. Dallas. Me pueden ver? So this is a very exciting time to have all these different theaters together, collaborate with each other, learn from each other. Dallas. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Dallas. Por favor, atención. Thank you. Um, we need to move forward because we we have a very limited time. So please forgive give us as we go forward. Uh, we need to hear from all of the five groups and quickly, because it, it's taken time, but we would like to answer the question, how does your community work together to address the shared concerns 
and goals and visions of your Latino theater makers? How do you work together? So give us that model that you have developed or that you're developing that, to work together. And we want to have enough time for Q&A, so please forgive me, we may have to interrupt. Please be conscious of how much time we have. Let's say max five minutes. Cool? Okay. Thank you. Miami. Hi, hello. I hear a lot of reverb, so we're going to pace ourselves a bit. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, basically, um, what we have here in terms of a model, we don't necessarily have a model. We are, we are still trying to find our way in terms of the Miami community. I think that one of the things that has been happening is that there are a lot of smaller uh, festivals that have been occurring in Miami, such as Micro Teatro, which is a festival of 15 minute plays that are done in uh, 10 by 10 containers. Um, we also have uh, FemFest, which is run by Sandra Garcia. We have uh, Mario Ernesto's festival. We have these small, uh, Festival del Monologo. Um, there are these small little uh, get-togethers that we decide we have to start creating something. So even if it's 15 minutes, or if it's a monologue, or if it's children's theater, we get together and say, how can we start sharing resources? Right now, uh, Teatro Prometeo is doing an international children's theater festival as part of the Miami Book Fair. So I think that and in terms of what Prometeo does, because we are a, a teaching institution, but we, we're a non-credit uh, institution. So we, our community, we want to invite all the other communities to also come to us. Uh, the idea is not to make Miami the, the forgotten city at the bottom of the peninsula, which it has been for a very long time. You don't really think of oh, let's all go to Miami and do something amazing there. But now I think the things have changed. We've been partnering with uh, playwrights. Uh, Milo Cruz is resident here. Oliver Mayer, I've done a couple of shows with him. And, um, and we are working a lot with doing plays that have been written by Latino playwrights in English. We are working to get them translated and adapted into Spanish. And, and that, and I say adapted because it changes because our culture is different. Um, and uh, I think that's been a very exciting process. We've, we've reached out with our friends in LA and New York and said, we are so different and yet we're the same. So how can we start to unite uh, the, the very Spanish language theater community with the rest of the community, which is the United States? So in terms of Prometeo, we are inviting artists to come and work with us, not just, just the US, but also Latin America. Because as Diane had said earlier, there is an amazing resource of theater artists coming from Latin America. We've worked with Yuyashkan, we've worked with groups from Colombia, and their training methodologies are so fresh and exciting to us, and language isn't a barrier. So we've been doing workshops, we work with playwrights. We try to um, let the community know that it needs to be seen and it needs to go out. So we also tour as well. And uh, as Jorge said, he's just come back from New York. And I think that our biggest challenge in Miami is saying, hey, we're part of the United States, but as Mario also said, we're the, we're the peninsula of Latin America. So both things. Thank you. OK, New York. Hello. OK. Um, well, I mean, I think along with the same, of the same question, but it's difficult for me to define just like one or two things. I can talk about myself personally as, a, as an individual artist and as a playwright. 
I think in New York, one of the things that I found when I moved here a couple years ago was how many different development opportunities there were and how much I, how much I found how great I thought that was. You know, uh, shortly after moving here, I participated in the um, Maria Fornes Hispanic Playwrights and Residence Lab at INTAR, and that was a really transformative experience for me as a playwright and as an artist working here in New York. Um, and I think that there's a lot of opportunities like that that exist here, and I think that's really, really valuable. Uh, one of the other things I think, too, is that my work tends to focus on uh, kind of cross-cultural collaborations, and I think that's really important. And one of the things that I recently did with my producing organization, Radical Evolution, was uh, a collaboration with an African-American theater company called the Movement Theater Company in Harlem, where we presented a play together. And I thought that, that the intersection, that collaboration that we put together was really, really valuable and really amazing. And we're looking to try and do that kind of work more. Um, does anyone else want to speak about and answer and respond to this question? Yes, no, yes? I'd love to just talk a little bit about- Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Christina Quintana and I'm a playwright. And uh, we just, I just love to say, we just had a really awesome discussion. Unless uh, we were just, we're all such different artists and I think we all come from such interesting backgrounds. And one of the, the big things that's like, it's New York. Like we are from so many different Latin American backgrounds. And a, a big thing we talked about was America and like how being American is a big part of who we are and how that becomes part of our Hispanic identity. And uh, I think that's something that's, I'm really interested personally in how we can further explore that. Like how, how are all of our different parts, as we talked a lot about um, being others within another. So how are we other than another and how can we connect the different forces of the Latin American community that are so varied so that it's more than just Chicano theater, more than just Cuban American theater. Like how do all the boroughs of Manhattan collide? Mm -hmm. Just to add. Um, hi, I'm Carmen Rivera, a playwright, and we were just to follow up this team. He's getting hi, to you. Hi. <laughs> The image is frozen for some reason, yeah. I don't know. Hi, everybody. Um, but one of the things that we discussed was um, at some point, like when when do we take our own um, careers or pass into our own hands? Mm -hmm. Knowing that there's an other within another and, and how the changing landscape, not just in New York, but of America, the, that there is a changing paradigm of culture and it's evolving. And it's evolving pretty quickly. So as artists, if we can't get into in a place that we might just have to take our own, you know, one of the alternatives is to take our own paths into our own hands. Yeah. Whether we produce ourselves, put it's a different form of company. So that was something that we felt like in New York there was a there was somewhat access to do. Somewhat, I mean, not easy, but at least there's a lot of us. That they're bigger numbers, so there's um, a way for us to to make alliances. Anybody else? One other thing that I think is important to think about in New York, and I was talking to Rosalba about this just a minute ago, is just, I, one of the challenges I have is making sure that I'm aware of everything that's going on and an aware and enough ability to be able to, to go and support everything that I want to go and support to. I feel like I wake up in the morning at seven and I blink and it's 11 o'clock at night. And so like, <laughs> How we do that and how we do that as a group and I want to charge our group here to kind of have a conversation about that and maybe you guys over in Boston or in other places that have you know built networks that uh, have that in place to where you can you know it's really easy to understand what else is going on so that's a big challenge for me here and I think it, other people feel it too um, okay I think we're gonna pass it on to um, Chicago thank you Sorry. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name hey. is Elizabeth and I am artistic associate with Dr. Luna. So one of the things we are talking about is how the Chicago community is united and diverse and it's striving to be more than one sector of Latino theater. And instead of segregating ourselves from the Latino, uh, from the theater community, we should be inclusive to it without losing our identity in it. So one of the things that we were also talking about, breaking the single story and inform other aesthetics of theater that our aesthetic comes from our culture. And that's something that we're not willing to compromise and it's not something that we have to be in the mold of theater and that's not the only way to really create it. In order to in order to share the diversity the, the most 
the diversity in the Latino community, whether it is race or nationality, we need to become self science financially and recognize our marks without being exclusive to other Latino communities. For example, we realize that we need to be able to tap into like other Latino businesses because that is where our audience is. And if that's where our audience is, if you want to be in the mainstream of theater, we have to be able, able to tell them, hey, we have a market, we have to, we are financially stable, and we are part of this community. You can't, re if our money talks, <laughs> then you have to listen. And in order to promote our shared vision of seeing our bodies without being politicized, we need and are, are in process we are in process of really combining the foundation of education and marketing and businesses because in that is really going to take our our art to a higher level, right? And so I'm hand it over to Isaac. Yeah, and so um, that was a large part of what we talked about when when looking at the issues that we're facing currently in Chicago. Um, but in addition to that, uh, where where a lot of that also stem from is the lack of Latino representation among larger leadership roles, which is obviously a problem for almost everybody, so I'm reading on the live Twitter feed. Um, so, you know, addressing that will be a challenge, but one that we are very willing to strive towards in attaining some tangible goals. Um, and because um, because of the, the surge of young and excited young Latino artists that are coming into the city, you know, Chicago is a hub for that and there isn't enough space for them. So these kinds of uh, implementing more opportunities for Latino you know, artistic administrative um, casting roles will help um, the larger Latino community exceed. And in addition to that, Chicago is very excited uh, to for DePaul to be hosting the Latino Theater Festival in 2015. <laughs> Much to the efforts of Lisa Cortez, um, I love you, girl, everybody here. Um, um, and to, to add on to that, we're proud because this is a step moving forward. Sit in a room, we have these conversations, and we're like, how often, and I'm actually quoting Lisa here, how often do we sit together and complain about what it is that we're working towards, and then Right, we, we seldom ever come up with strategic plans, and because of people like HowlRound and because of, of organizations like having us all come together on this really awesome virtual connection, we were able to see some sort of tangible, realistic goal we achieved and attained. And so, seeing the Latino Theater Festival happening at DePaul University with a new facility in 2015 is sure enough going to help boost. Um, not only participation among the Latino community in Chicago, which I don't necessarily think that there's a lack of that, I just, um, but increasing exposure and possibly even providing more opportunities for the large number of young Latino makers, Latino theater makers who are just arriving into the city. Um, and also just to add on to that, in addition to that, with institutions like the Goodman Theater who are carving spaces in the regular programming, i.e. our new theater festival this November is solely of Latino work, and um, with things like that, Chicago is definitely seeing an increase in representation among Latino theater in the city. And I think, I think that's it. Yeah. So. Anybody else have anything to add? Anything to add? All right. Thank you. So let's uh, pass it on to, woo, yeah, thank you. And we're moving quick, we're moving quick. Hey everybody, uh, I've been talking quite a bit, so I'm gonna hand it off to Fanny Garcia. Awesome. Uh, the thing here in LA and working here in LA is that if you're hungry and, I think and that passionate there, there are ways art, that you go find a project. That, and that's um, and also you can find a home. And similar organizations. Oh. That uh, hold up. I'm sorry. Stop a second. Set yourselves up to be just that. The Latino um, theater company uh, and LATC, uh, for example. And also uh, East LA Rec, Cornerstone. Sorry, 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 sorry. And out of Wait. these organizations, thank you, Armando. Can you please stop? Art. We have two uh, communities. have gone. Thank you. Companies, and one of those that has been coming out of that um, kind of mentorship is that uh, is off the tracks. Juan Parada, uh, for, he's from LA. Salvadorian American artist, he decided to start his own company. And at first it was all English productions, but now he's doing productions in Spanish to the Spanish speaking community here. So that's an example of someone that was mentored. 
here in LA and went on to start their own theater company. Uh, also, the Latino Theater Company and at LATC will be having a Latino National Latino Theater Festival here uh, in 2014 that will um, hopefully go towards um, really uh, concretizing their mission, which is about uh, representing the colors and the diversity that the City of Angels really is. And uh, they've done that, they're doing it now. Uh, they have a production called The Road Weeps, The Well Runs Dry, that has traveled, uh, that has been produced at four different uh, theater companies throughout the country. And it's a multicultural cast, uh, Native Americans and African Americans on stage, but not just on stage, the crew is also diverse. So and it's bringing in diverse audiences. And it's bringing in really diverse audiences. I've seen many different colors on, in those seats. Uh, so it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to be here in LA, to be working in LA. Um, and we mentioned this before, but I wanted to make sure to mention it again, that we um, kind of live history every day here. The uh, Latino Theater Company started out of the Latino Civil Rights Movement. And a lot of artists that are based here in LA have come from that, Diane Rodriguez, Luis Alfaro. And um, so we're continuing the work that they've established. And uh, I think we're, doing, we're taking it into diverse, very diverse and very different uh, paths. And there's a lot to do. The future really looks bright in LA. And that's not just the sun. Diversity <laughs> <laughs> and our friend from uh, East West, maybe right. say something. Oh, sure. Hi, I'm Leslie Ishii, and I work with East West. <laughs> and I just want to share that um, we stand in solidarity with your communities to move your agendas forward. We're organizing here where we are the oldest person of color theater in the country to work and collaborate with the Latino communities and to move diversity and inclusion forward. We are majority people of color in this state already. So we are the model for this country. So thank you, we stand in solidarity with all of you. All right, we're handing it to Dallas. Dallas? Hola, Dallas. Hola, Dallas. Okay. Se enojaron, claro. Qué pena. Hello, hello. Hi. First of all, again, I want to iterate the fact that we're an alliance. Ready? This is Dallas, ready? Yep, yep, we can hear you. All right, so. With that in mind, is that um, okay? With, okay, we're going to think about. Uh, we of course we have experience and challenges as well as some small triumphs, and those those um, uh, those triumphs, of course, revolve around. Um, basically two overriding issues for us, again, as an organization, <laughs> we come together and formulate goals and then projects to meet those particular goals. And one of those uh, uh, projects was about, uh, basically a goal, was about securing city funding, and, to, and of course to, to uh, secure and enhance sense of visibility throughout the city. <laughs> And, and that included, of course, even meeting with the city manager in terms of making our concerns uh, uh, known, as well as wanting greater access to performance and rehearsal spaces, in particular spaces run by the city, you know, the Latino Cultural Center, for example. And in terms of visibility, we've been working hard on uh, all the companies work on their own in terms of enhancing our visibility, but we also participate recently in the Latino Cultural Center's uh, annual One Act Play Festival, which we had a very strong presence there. 
We're also very proud of the fact that we also like to uh, go on record as uh, support and mentoring among companies, particularly when it comes to grant proposals. And so we ask our more established companies that have had a successful track record of getting grant money to help those that are perhaps struggling with that or getting that particular process of securing city funding. And then the last thing we want to talk about in terms of trying to get mechanisms for exchanges to occur, Dunkel has its own Facebook page, and now Dunkel also has its own website, which is a, we encourage all of you to look on there. We, we hope our website will be a place of destination in which it will people will go there to see not only what things are happening, but also how to locate particular artists that they need for their particular productions. Beautiful. Thank you so much, and thank you, everybody. Bravo, everybody, for your participation in this. We're going to wrap it up. Right on, right on, everybody. Thank you. We're, can you um, turn the mic? The, thank you, just so you can see a face. We're going to wrap it up now. Um, so I'm just going to kind of quickly thank everybody for your attention. Um, as far as I could tell, because it, it is hard, it's a hard technology, it's hard to pay attention to, and, um, and that's where those six dances come in, right? So, but I think what I heard, just some themes to coalesce, and I'm just gonna, you know, do that thing, is we heard about some isolation, a sense of isolation in Miami from the rest of the country, but that they are also able to pull themselves together from all the different nations that are coming there, that are representing, that are working in all different ways to bridge that gap, to bridge not only into their English-speaking community, but also to the rest of the country. In New York City, there's just so much going on, and how do they keep that information together? And they have formed an active alliance. In Chicago, how do they explain the Latino aesthetic how do they connect with their own Latino community to build up their own economic position so that they are strong with the rest of the theater community and the community at large? And how do they ally themselves with larger institutions to galvanize their community? The, the festival, as in Miami, the festivals seem to be galvanizing action. In Los Angeles, they talked about mentorship, about passing on information, about reaching out into the Spanish-speaking community even more, and forming alliance and keeping that together. And that, again, the festival is a way to galvanize their efforts. And in Dallas, the need for spaces. There's a lot of companies working on their own. There's a lot of sort of language barriers that are happening, but they're bridging that by forming this organization, this Tanto, the Teatro, and I'm sorry. Can, uh, David, could you, tanto, I don't want to mess it up. Tanto stands for? Teatro Alianza of North Texas Organization. Tanto has a Facebook page and a, a website as well. So then they were encouraging us to look at it over. So comunidades in Miami, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, y Dallas. Thank you so much for your time and energy and being here with us. And thank you, Boston, for being here with us. I'm going to hand this over to Kinan. Okay, how about that, huh? We had an opportunity to talk with five different regions of the country. What we're going to do in this space now, and is that we're going to take a quick 15 minute break and then we're gonna come back. But before we go to the break, for the strategy group leaders of the next session, I need you to come see me. Everybody else, we'll be wrangling you in 15 minutes. See you in 15. Also, uh, just quick housekeeping, for those sticking around to do the transition for the party, make sure you see Thea, who's in the back by Jamie. So she's taking our dinner orders because we're gonna work and eat to get the space going for the party. For those of y'all sticking around, go see her. Put your order in. So group leaders, I need you to come see me, please. Group leaders for the last session.